All right, so I'm here today to talk about the mortar. We've got an update and of course, all of this stuff, you probably have already seen this inside of Tower Defense Simulator. You can go look if you want. Basically, the following towers have been rebalanced. We see the mortar again. Now this is the third update in a row, back to back to back, where we have seen the mortar be rebalanced. Now, I don't know if you know what that means, but it's pretty clear that Tower Defense Simulator doesn't know what to do with the mortar. They wouldn't need to rebalance the tower three times if everything was fine with that tower. So, you know what that implies? There's problems with the mortar. So here I go on Forgotten Docks, and I'm gonna talk about what this issue is. Now, before we get to that point, I of course need to farm a little bit. And as I'm farming, I'm gonna talk about just this update in general, because it was kind of a big update I didn't get to check out all of the tower rebalances, but I did get to check out like the golden cowboy. And I would say that probably farming is going to be more efficient for money now because the golden cowboy was just really, really good. It was better than farm in pretty much every way. I, it could defend anything all while providing you more money than a farm could if you spammed enough of those cowboys. So I definitely see where the developers were coming from when they implemented that nerf. But then again, as for the other stuff, I didn't get to check it out. The new UI, what I think of this, I guess it's kind of cool. The tower is not being blocked by the enemies. That's actually amazing. Back then, uh, well, you see uh, the engineers on top of the normals. But if I'm trying to click on a tower, for example, it wouldn't prioritize me clicking on the enemies. It would uh, let me click the engineer, I guess, or one placing. Not sure exactly how it works. Point is, it's the, the enemies get in the way less, which is a very neat change. Uh, they also kind of glitched this farm a little bit. I mean, you can see that they have, uh, well, these floating things. That's only supposed to be like glass on the max farms, I believe. Actually, I don't even think it's glass. I think it's uh, just part of the max level farm. Whatever. Not the best design, but okay. Let's finally get to talking about the mortar. So the way the mortar works, and everybody already knows this, but I'm still going to explain it just to set some grounds here. The mortar is a splash damage tower. So when you place it down, it's going to shoot a projectile that explodes. So here we go. I'm going to place it down. And, well, these enemies are out of range. So here we got a horde. When the mortar shoots this horde, you see it should do exceptionally well at clearing this horde out. And you can see that it does. It handles that horde much easier than a tower like, I don't know, the engineer would here. The engineer would definitely take longer. And that was always usually the case. The mortar would do pretty good against clustered low HP enemies. But you see that speedy right there? Uh, that part you just noticed? That is exactly the mortar's weakness. Single target. When there's not a horde, the mortar is going to do definitely a lot less damage than say this engineer here because the engineer it focuses all of its power on one enemy at a time anyways the mortar needs hordes like these for it to be good so you see we have the boss here i'm just gonna upgrade my mortar a bit look fantastic clears out these normals like they're nothing but now let's look at the damage to the boss yeah, that's not the best. If I was to spend $2,000, I could do it on this minigunner, and it would uh, definitely do a little bit better than this. But all right, I, I'll admit, this balancing has made the mortar pretty decent. Like, it's actually able to wipe out these enemies pretty well at the start. So then if the mortar here appears as perfectly fine, where exactly is the issue with the mortar? What makes it a tower that the developers physically cannot fix no matter what they do? Well, you see... In TDS, you can have the right amount of defense, or you can have an overkill defense. With the right amount of defense, wave 12 and look at my farming. Isn't this just... My farming's insane. Now, with over defending, if I were to invest all of my money into, say, this minigunner, instead of my farms, how exactly would that benefit me? I will still be able to kill every enemy, because that's ultimately the goal. Doesn't matter what way you do it, if you kill every enemy, then you're doing well. Like, for example, this upgrade, geared up, it costs $5,500 and I can't afford it. But through the concept of over defending, if I were to get it, I would have less money on my farms. And spending less money on my farms means less money later on in the game, means I have a higher chance of losing later on. Now, why am I explaining this? That's because the mortar very well falls under the category of over defending. You can see it's doing fantastic against these early game enemies, but now connected to over defending. Do we really need such a strong 
but kind of expensive tower to defeat enemies that are pretty easy, like these hiddens. Your point might be, no, like, look, the mortar is, is great against these breakers, but um, so would this minigunner be, you know? Because the, the splash damage of the mortar, you see here? It's not necessary for me to be able to beat these breakers. And even though it sounds like I'm saying a lot of gibberish right now, things are all going to make sense. Because I've established the concept of over defending and you know that you never want to spend more money than the bare minimum you need for defending. Think about the mortar in this scenario. If a single target DPS tower, like the minigunner here, can handle hordes like these. I mean, to be fair, it's higher level than the mortar was. But here we go. Here's a lot of breakers. This is what you want the mortar for. Uh, well, you see, the minigunner... Well, I'm probably going to need to max it here because uh, that's a lot of breakers. I can already get by without the mortar. And remember, if I only need the bare minimum, this also applies to my tower slots. Think about it. If I can defend, say, without the engineer in my loadout at all, the only purpose of me bringing the engineer would be for the purpose of over defending. I mean, it would be overkill, right? And if over defending is something you don't want to do, you can remove the stuff you don't need to clear up space for things that actually help. So again, for the purpose of understanding, you see, this is a pretty big horde. If I were to have a mortar, it would absolutely annihilate this horde. But why would I need the mortar to annihilate this horde if my minigunner can already do that? You can notice my loadout, for example, doesn't have DJ. And pretend that the mortar doesn't exist in my loadout here. The DJ would actually provide more help since that would only empower the stuff that can already do the defending. So basically make the job of defending even easier. So what I'm establishing here is that mortar falls under a category of a unnecessary tower. If your other towers can do the job, then it would be better to take towers that help them do their job rather than extra towers that are not necessary in any way whatsoever. Now, I guess you can argue that mortar would make the job of the minigunner easier. I mean, it would shred all of the hordes and leave the single target stuff for the minigunner, which excels at it, to deal with. But think again, single target, right? That's the mortar's one weakness. The minigunner does not have a weakness. It can deal with hordes and it can deal with single target. Do you see here? That means the mortar has a con. It has a reason you don't want to use it. The minigunner does not have a reason you don't want to use it. Well, other than maybe there being a stronger tower that you'd like to use in place of it. But I hope you can start making the connection here. Mortar falls under a category of useless over defending, and it has a weakness, that being single target. So now you have to balance things out here. Is the mortar in the loadout actually worth the extra crowd control it gives? Because again, you don't need that extra crowd control you can already get by without it so is it worth that tower slot is it worth the money and despite it having one big weakness of single target dps oh and not to mention a placement limit of only four i mean does it all balance out and here's the thing the very reason that this tower is just an absolute pain for the developers is that it doesn't. You see, crowd control can already be provided by towers such as like the Engineer, which has explosives in its War Machine missiles. And yes, although it's true that it's, you know, much more expensive and harder to get an Engineer than a Mortar, which is only level 75, you can also find stuff like the Pursuit. I mean, it's only 25 levels away, yet it's significantly better than the Mortar because it excels both at crowd control and single target DPS. If a tower has enough single target DPS, then crowds are not even an issue. And with the way the game currently is, single target DPS is actually enough to deal with hordes. To help my point, I mean, let me just get rid of uh, the engineer here because that's splash damage. And look at this, it's a horde of enemies. And uh, well, these minigunners are purely single target DPS. They're able to deal with this just fine. Even, a even if a mortar can do it better, what's the point of doing it better? It's over defending. It's not necessary. So yeah, mortar is essentially a trophy tower that you use to make things a little bit easier. I will say though, mortar can be useful in something like Polluted Wastelands 2, where you're playing with multiple people. Then, you know, taking up one tower slot is not the end of the world because you have 20 total tower slots your whole team can work with. I don't exactly understand why I can't put oh my god what a tiny spot but the reason I, I was explaining all of that is to get to the point of why this tower is such a pain for the developers everything i've been saying so far is that you do not need the mortar you can use it to make things easier but it's not needed but because it's a level 75 tower so you actually have to kind of play the game a lot to get to it because it can cost robux for all those reasons the developers want the tower to have a purpose they want players to look at their loadout and think 
I should bring a mortar. And here comes a... Uh, like one of the hardest waves for single target DPS. We got these uh, big breakers. They need a lot of uh, crowd control in order to be able to defeat them. But you see, single target DPS, if it's already strong enough to do it, the mortar is not needed like the developers want it to be. And so I hope you see the dilemma now. The developers want this tower to be in a position of where people want to use it. But the game, the way the gameplay is, with single target DPS being more than strong enough, and there not really being enough hordes for you to want to use the mortar, or any gimmicks for that matter, like with the old shield, where the mortar would actually do exceptionally at countering it, the developers are kind of stumped. They don't know what to do. That's why they've had to rebalance this thing three times, and they're probably going to do it more. But here's what I think. The developers are looking at the wrong place. The issue is not with the mortar. They can make it do a thousand damage per shot or whatever, but I mean, okay, at that point, I guess it would also be a goaded single target DPS tower. But they can keep making all these changes to it, and it's not going to increase the, the amount people actually use the mortar. What the developers should be looking at, if they really want people to use the mortar, is actually the enemies. You see, these breakers are the best example of absolute crowd mayhem, where a mortar would really actually help in taking care of said crowd. And the developers are almost there with these breakers. They provide enough of a crowd sort of challenge to really push your single target towers, but not enough to overwhelm them. If the developers instead made maybe like five times the amount of breakers on this wave come out, then my single target would actually be overwhelmed. These breakers would probably leak. But if I were to have a mortar, it would deal with five times as many breakers just as easily as it would deal with all of the breakers we saw there. The amount of enemies doesn't actually matter to the mortar because the mortar does equal damage to everything in its explosion radius. So it's essentially tower defense emitter hard hordes that are way too much for single target DPS to handle, but just right for the mortar to handle, then suddenly you're now going to have to put some thought into what you're going to bring into your loadout. You're not going to be able to just chug along with some mini gunners, maybe some accelerators that do all the work. You're going to have to have something like a mortar, a rocketeer, and I guess pursue an engineer since they have splash damage. But having those towers be a requirement will actually add some variety into your loadout. It's not just going to be spam mini gunners and that's good enough for the rest of the game. That's not what tower defense is about. TDS is intended to be a strategy game where you have to think and plan your strategy. And there's not that much you have to do of that unless you're playing maybe Polluted Wastelands 2, Badlands, or Hardcore. That's the only times you'd ever really have to think about what you're doing because in the majority of scenarios just spamming max level stuff like I have here it's gonna do the work and that gets boring pretty quick that's why TDS's player count although it can go all the way up to 100k that's never gonna it's never gonna stay there because people are gonna very quickly get bored of the gameplay look at this humongous horde that minigunner spam can just take care of like it's nothing let me bring up an example round 63 in Bloons Tower Defense 6 if you've ever played that game You'll know that that is a pretty devastating round. All right, so here's the example. We go to round 63 and we send out the round. And you see, here's a massive cluster of ceramics. Now, ceramics are definitely not the strongest thing here. There's BFBs, for example, which are way above ceramics, but you'd actually find a much harder time defending the massive cluster of ceramics on round 63 just because they're sheer amount. So here we go, single target, this sniper, perfect at single target TPS. Look at this. I mean, are you kidding me? Look at all, there's still so many. I just lost 2,000 lives. Oh, here's a buffed version of this, you know, it, it, it got an ability. Still not enough. You can just see how much single target DPS struggles. But now, for example, if we were to grab ourselves something that is great at crowd control, see like this, this uh, bomb shooter right here. Uh, okay, that wasn't the best placement. Let me, let me put it right here. Here we go, send out round 63. So this is much cheaper. And the only difference is this tower is now just splash damage based. Look at that. It cleared out the entire clump of ceramics. One of these, which is much cheaper. There's hundreds of balloons here, but because it's splash damage, you see, you see what I'm getting at here. And even though you see, we have a single target here uh, that can actually pretty easily take down a BFB. Not the balloons, though. And this recursive is definitely going to do way less damage. You see how long the BFB layer is staying alive? Once it breaks open, yes, things are going to be pretty easy for the bomb. But you see, that's the thing here. Single target is not enough to do everything. While in Tower Defense Simulator, it is. Single target is enough to deal with the big boys and to deal 
with the small boys. That analogy was probably terrible, but what I mean by that is it is enough to deal with the BFBs and with the ceramics. So yeah, again, all that TDS needs to do, like say this was a giant boss, this is the worst you would see in Tower Defense Simulator. You know what we need to see? We need to see something like this in TDS, you know? Something that eight accelerators couldn't even deal with. But a mortar? I mean, this game even has a mortar for us right here. Let's just go like this. Okay, that was a terrible example. I didn't use the best path of the mortar. Okay, so, like, look at this. No accelerator is going to deal with this. But then we grab a mortar. Oh my god. Everything is gone. Do you see the point? Yeah, that's what Tower Defense Simulator needs. And what I need you to do is to like and subscribe because my channel is dying. Uh, please. And you, Star Cody.